Hello, and welcome to Inside BSKL, the podcast. This series aims to provide insight to parents from our very own world-class international educators. Tune in as we share experiences, strategies, and the unique dynamics of teaching in a global setting. This week, we will hear from Katie and Natalia about the role of compassionate care for young people, both at school as educators and at home as parents. Let's take a look inside BSKL. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited to be talking to you today. Um, I guess we'll start by introducing ourselves. Mm -hmm. My name is Katie Humphrey. I've been teaching for 14 years. I teach English and Media Studies and I'm also the Deputy Head uh, in the Secondary and the Designated Safeguarding Lead. And I have two children. I have an eight-year-old girl and a 10-year-old boy. My name is Natalia Stein Cortez. I am a clinical psychologist and I am the school counselor here at BSKL. I work both in secondary and in primary school. And I also have a daughter and she's 11 years old. Oh, scary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, we're talking about compassion, which is something I guess that the both of us, we can get quite deep into when we're talking about compassion. And I think we feel quite passionately about the subject. But that's only been quite recent, hasn't it? So I think one what I was thinking about um, before um, talking to you today about compassion was the first thing that we did when we first started speaking about compassion, which was what does it actually mean? Mm. And I was really keen to hear from uh, your perspective as a clinical psychologist, as what is the psychology behind compassion? What does it mean when we when we talk about it? Yeah, and it's really interesting because it's a concept that maybe a lot of people hear about or know about, but maybe not actually know the exactly mm. the exact definition. Um, and even teachers sometimes they they don't know if if what they are doing is compassionate or not. But probably they are, but they don't know how to name that. Um, so. The meaning of compassion is to suffer together. Mm. It's um, when we feel motivated to relieve someone else's suffering. And there, there is um, a small difference with empathy because in empathy, we it's more like understanding that we feel what other people is feeling, but we don't feel the need necessar- necessarily to do something about it. Mm. In compassion, we our aim is to help in, in any way or another. So when we think about compassion is how we can um, make a a relationship based in in compassion. Mm. And I think that when when we talk about teaching in a compassionate way, is that, is a relationship based way way of teaching. Yeah, and I think, um, I know I get compassion and empathy crossed Mm. quite often. and using empathy and saying, you know, you can empathize with someone, but actually making that crossover to being compassionate is that next step, would you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's like the next step. Yeah. So then I got to thinking. So I've been teaching for 14 years. And when I was doing my PGCE, I was 23, 24. And when, as a young person starting out in teaching... You're taught about how to deliver good lessons. It's a really heavy focus on teaching and learning and pedagogy and also behavior and how to manage behavior in the classroom, how to have a well-behaved class. But at no point throughout your teacher training, are you ever taught, or I certainly wasn't 14 years ago, how to build relationships with young people? What are the skills you need? How do you create those relationships? How do you have a relationships-based classroom? Because it was always about the delivery of your lessons and the behavior of your classroom, not the connections Mm. between your students. And is that also the same for parenting? There's no handbook on how to create compassionate relationships with your children. How do you do it? How do you cultivate that in the home. So I know that's a that's a really big question, but how where would you start? How would you start in building relationships with compassion and having a a, a compassionate driven focus in the classroom but also in the home as well? I would say the first thing we need to create is a safe space where children, students and kids at home 
uh, feel safe physically and mm. emotionally. So they can open up that they, they know that whatever they are going to say is going to be well received. Um, I always say to parents, what you want is when your child is in any trouble, they want to come to you. Mm. And in order to do that, they need to feel safe. They need to know that they are not going to be punished, that they are not going to get into more trouble. You, and, you, it, and this is something that we need to create. This is not something that is given. So in the classroom and as parents, the first priority is to create a safe mm. space. And how can we do that? Yeah. Being empathetic, with active listening, always being there for them. I always say to parents as well, you are probably the one that knows your child best. So you know when they have a test, you know when they um, struggle with a situation, with a friend, with themselves, if they have, I don't know, any kind of body issues or they are growing up. So there are so many different things that are going to be changing in their lives. And the first step to build that connection is to, to care and mm -hmm. to share uh, and to show them that we, that we care. Um, and we need to observe. We need to yeah. be there listening and sometimes not talking as much. Mm -hmm. It's more like, oh, understanding. And usually our kids don't want advice all the time. They just want to feel heard. That's um, an interesting point, isn't it? Because I think it's a preconception of adults that we should give them all of the advice and we should tell them what to do and tell them how to, how to think and how to behave and how to act. Um, and it's quite hard sometimes to just be quiet Ooh, and just be really still hard. and listen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I told you the first thing that I, I the first thing I learned in in my internship is to don't say anything. <laughs> so my first interviews, as I was just there listening for one hour, two hours, uh, and I was not allowed to say anything. And it is so hard mm. because we want to give our opinion, we want to share our experience. Um, but as parents and as teachers, we sometimes need to to be in our role, especially, especially mm. teacher, teachers, because we know that our students are not our friends and, right. and they, um, they are there to receive some kind of advice. But sometimes it's interesting because when they come to, to, to see me, is that, oh, but Miss Cortez give very nice advice. I don't give advice. <laughs> I never say what they need to do. I just maybe ask um, in a different way or show things to them in a different mm -hmm. way. And, and they just decide what they want to do. So I do want to ask you for some advice mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. point. <laughs> so knowing um, about listening and, and understanding how they're feeling and checking in on them. Um, this happened. So I, this this happened to me last night, and and I was thinking about this before seeing you today and your advice on this because I think that quite often as adults we know what we should do and we know what we should say, but it's okay knowing that and then actually doing it is something really really different. So um, I got home last night. We had me and my son. We'd been out at uh, an athletics event, so we got home really really late, about nine o'clock at night. And he was really tired and he was going to bed and then he started um, crying. He didn't want me to leave. Uh, he was telling me that he was really scared and he was saying, no, 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 you, ca you can't leave me. I'm scared. I'm scared. And I was saying, but you, what are you scared? There's nothing to be scared about. I'm right here. I'm right next door. There's, you know, this is, this is, you know where I am. And I was in my head. I thought, right, okay, say all the right things. I love you. You're in a safe place. You can come and see me. But I'm scared, mommy. I'm scared. And, and, and I ended up saying, but why? Why are you scared? You have nothing to be scared about. And sort of ended up saying, you're fine. There's nothing wrong. You're absolutely fine. And then walking away. And then I thought, um, this idea of compassion and showing, well, showing empathy. Okay, I understand you. I hear you. But then sort of shutting it down is something that I think we do quite easily because it's more comfortable because I found it really hard to empathize with his feeling of being scared because I knew there was nothing to be scared about. There wasn't anything scary in the house. There's no monsters. It seemed completely irrational mm -hmm. to me that he was feeling that he was feeling scared. And so I shut it down quite quickly and said, you're fine. I'm here. You know where I am. And it didn't work, obviously. And I had to keep Keep going, keep going back in until he until he fell asleep. But I think when, as adults, we're in those situations with our children or with our students, and they're telling us something, they're telling us how they're feeling, but we struggle 
to empathize with that feeling. And therefore, it's easier for us to say, you'll be fine. Um, those sort of canned responses, just stay positive. Don't worry about it. It will pass is probably not the most helpful response that they could hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's tricky yeah. because we also have emotions. Mm. It was 9 p.m. Mm. You were also mm. tired. You have been working the whole day. So as I said, it's like when you need to put your hat as a parent or your hat as a teacher, you also need to have self-compassion for you. Mm. And you also need to be, uh, okay, it's okay for me to be dealing with this situation right now. Or maybe I can stop for a minute, have five minutes and then come back. Or maybe, so you will have like five minutes to think mm. about how, how is best. And I think that's better because we're also showing our mm. children that that's completely fine to to do because we are also teaching self-regulation right otherwise sometimes it's just like and, and this happens a lot it happened to me as well um with one students that they come in and they it was our first session and they didn't want to come in and it's like but i'm scared i don't know you and mm. and my instinct an answer would be but you're in a safe place there is nothing wrong here we are just going to talk but i what I said, it was, I completely understand you are scared. We don't know each other. You don't know yeah. what is going to happen. Maybe we can try and then you decide if you would like to stay a little longer. And, and the girl said, oh, mm. okay. She's hearing me. She's, she's understanding that I am scared. And that's a completely different um, perspective from what you was talking about, what mm. you were talking about, the toxic positivity. Yes, um, yes. Because I'm really scared about that. And it's much easier to, to say everything is going to be mm. fine. Don't worry. Or uh, you shouldn't be crying about this. Why? Why they shouldn't be crying about mm. this? Maybe this is really important for them. And with kids, they have like this happened with my daughter. Um, she yesterday, she, uh, her, her lock couldn't open. Mm -hmm. So she was really frustrated and she really loved that lock. And I was like, but it's a lock. Why do you want that lock? We can change the lock. No, I want this lock. And she wanted to try it like to different combinations mm -hmm. because something happened with the numbers and the combination. It was 10, 10 p.m. And she was trying to, Sophia, no, <laughs> but what are you doing? And I said, okay, I understand. This is, this is, this is important for you, but maybe we can, we can continue the next mm. day. So it's really hard. Because we also have our own emotions yes. and you also need to regulate yourself yeah. in order to, to create that, that space. But it's really important that they not only feel, feel heard, mm. but that they also feel like it's okay to be anything, to feel anything. If they are scared, mm. if they are upset, if they are frustrated, they are not only to feel heard, right. but they are also going to feel, okay, it's okay to feel anything. Uh, and I think that that's the, the base of compassion. Yeah. But that's really hard to get into that space, isn't it? Because you said earlier that compassion is about suffering together. And so therefore you have to be able to not only validate their feelings, but then get into that space with them, believe that feeling that they're yeah. telling you yeah, exactly. and be curious about how they're feeling it and why they're feeling it and really get into that conversation, that curiosity and find out what they're doing. And I think so often it's so easy to give that toxic positivity and it's so easy as an adult, as a teacher, as a parent to move on quickly from that conversation because it feels really uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really hard and mm. no one wants to see their child suffering. Yes. So we yes. just want to pass that very fast yeah. or we want to give them the solution. So if mm. they are suffering, then we say, oh, maybe you should do this. And because it's easier for everyone, yeah. but you are not teaching them anything. Yeah. And what we want is for them to be empowered and to, to be resilient. And that is something that we need to teach. We can ask questions. We can say, uh, how do you feel like this is going to go in the best direction or what is that you want from this situation? Mm. How did this situation make you feel? And then with those questions, they are going to start um, deciding, mm. what is, deciding what is that they want to do. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to, 
and as I said, it's because we are also tired and we also want to have our own free time. Yes. And that's that's why it's really important. And I always say that to my parents, you really need to take care of yourself. Mm. You cannot pour from, from an empty cup. It's really important that you feel okay. That And if you don't, it's completely fine to say, okay, I'm, I'm not ready to deal with this situation mm. right now. And um, if you have a partner or if you have someone else in the family that can deal with that situation, that's completely fine. And you are also teaching and, and showing that you are not feeling okay and that you need to do something about it and then you can can step in again. Mm. Um, but with this, is like we model behavior yes. all the time. As teachers, as parents, they are seeing us more than what they are listening to us. So everything that we do, they are going to do. And the way that we treat them, they are going to treat their peers. That's why it's really important the way that we talk to them that is the way that they are going to to talk to their to their relationships, friendships, classmates, everyone. That's such an interesting point, isn't it? And I think we forget that so often that they're watching us all the time. All the time. We are being watched as adults and they're learning social cues. They're learning um, also how to navigate those tricky feelings themselves when they see how we how we do it um which I think is quite a lot of pressure <laughs> <laughs> yeah because as I said it, it doesn't mean that you have to be perfectly balanced all the yeah, time yeah, because yeah, that's not yeah, real yeah absolutely yeah that means that yeah. you can regulate yourself mm -hmm. and say okay I can do this I cannot do this and that's what you yes. want them to learn that yeah. it's completely fine yeah. to to feel everything mm -hmm. and then what we do with that and how we um take that as um, as an example of mm. what to do. And I think if they feel when they're, when they're around adults and not just parents, but teachers as well, if they feel that they're in a space where they feel cared for, they feel that somebody's there to listen to them, they're not being judged, um, and that, that, that adult genuinely cares about them, genuinely likes them, genuinely wants them, and they feel that they want them to do well, they're, they're then going to be more likely to have better outcomes, yeah. to have better academic outcomes, better behavioral outcomes. I think everything that, everything goes back to that relation, like the relationship and how you perceive relationships. And I would argue as well, it's not just um, children that feel that it's adults as yeah. well. Yeah. If you're if if you're um, surrounded by people that you feel care about you and uh, they're supporting you, you're more likely to be happier to yeah, exactly. do exactly better. You will you will have a better um, well being. Yes, you yeah. if you feel better, you are going to behave better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be in a better space to learn yeah. and to drive mm -hmm. and to grow and and more in a positive way. Yeah. Um, not the toxic positivity, mm, but more mm. in the growing and mm. driving. Yeah, I think if if I look back when I was at school and what you remember about your teachers and what you remember about your relationships, you always, I've, and we, we posed this question, didn't we, to the mm. teachers. We said, think back to when you were at school. What do you remember? What do you remember about your teachers? And you remembered the teachers that you really liked and the teachers that you felt you had a really good relationship with. Mm -hmm. And then you remember the teachers that you felt you didn't like, <laughs> that you didn't have really a good relationship. Yet, and it was time. sort of very much, um, it was very much on the opposite end of the spectrum. You're, you, you remember linked to your emotions, don't you? And those relationships that you had growing up were very much, uh, very much part of your emotional uh, link to an adult or to a teacher um, rather than, you know, a teacher that you might remember uh, for anything other than just feeling good about yourself and you feeling that they cared about you and that they wanted you to do that. You wanted you, they, they wanted you to do well. And you have those memories, don't you? That, that I think are very much linked to feelings and emotions. Yeah. And then we can talk about the impact that mm. all the, the, the long lasting impact that all of this um, is going to have and how this impact is also because what we will want to do while mm. we talk about this is how this impact is in the whole community mm. with the staff, with the students, with parents um, and how this is a long lasting impact 
So how we are going to build resilience from this, how we are going to not only be compassionate and empathetic, but we can also um, create healthy relationships mm. because we know when to wait. We know when the other person needs something and that balance give you healthy yes. lifestyle if you yeah. if you want to put it like that so this compassion approach this compassionate approach is really really important mm. for the students later life mm. when they are going to be an adult as well that that is going to be the base of everything so what advice would you give that when we have students and our own children as well that um place more emphasis on results uh, mm. and place more emphasis on grades and test scores than um, relationships and you know, thriving and feeling happy in themselves when actually they're growing up in a world that very much focuses on their academic outcomes. Yeah, that's really, really hard. I try to change the approach to the effort and mm -hmm. how they can really, or they need to focus on the effort. And we talk about that with parents and with students. We really need to appreciate um, and build that sense of achievement because mm -hmm. sometimes it's like they have this big to-do list of things to do and it's a never-ending list. So they never have that feeling of, oh, I achieved something. I am really proud of myself. And, yeah. and that's also really important. Mm -hmm. It's not only about parents or teachers saying, oh, I am proud of you. I, I prefer to say, oh, you should really be proud of yourself. All of the things. And it's not only academics. It can be mm. social or it can be struggles that they are having. And when they feel better, is that you should really be proud of yourself. And building that sense of achievement is, is really, really important. Mm. So um, when I saw my son today, the first thing I asked him was, how did you do in your assessment? I know. <laughs> What should I have said? Because <laughs> I know I shouldn't have said that, should I? How, what grade did you get? <laughs> I know. And that's what I, we were talking about. Maybe our parents did that to us. Yeah, so that's yeah, what yeah, we are used yeah, to, sure. to, to, to yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, things are changing mm. fast. Mm. And the way that um, it's maybe uh, um, will build more the connection yes. is in these kind of situations, maybe are not questions. Okay. So questions are good if we are uh, trying to help them brainstorming mm. or help them um, looking for solutions and we want them to bring something. But sometimes connections are just statements and um, say, oh, I know that you have a test or I was thinking about you during your math test or during your science test. Um, and the, mm, if you that. say something like that, mm you don't necessarily have to get an answer. So you are not putting that stress that, oh my God, I have the test and then I have to answer my mom uh, that yes. maybe it was not a great test. Yes. Uh, but if you say, oh, I, I was just thinking yes. about it, yeah. um, then mm. if you are ready or if you want to talk about it, I'm here. More something like that. That's a really nice statement. I had another really nice statement the other day which said um, about... Um, a child walking in late, uh, turning up late to uh, a session. Um, I think it was like a training session after school or something. And they were really late. And the first thing that they um, that they heard was, I'm so glad you're here. And it's that shift, isn't it? Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. Why are you late? Where have you been? To I'm so glad you're here. And then I think that really resonated. So if if we say that our end goal here is to bring it back to being compassionate um, and reminding ourselves of if we take that compassionate approach it's going to have a lasting impact yes. on our young people mm -hmm. and what what would you say are the biggest or is the biggest impact or a list of things that we know will impact them in the long run in the long term if if we create this compassionate culture within our setting First, we are going to create a sense of belonging. Mm. They all going to feel that they belong in school. Um, compassion also includes inclusivity, mm. and we are really hard working on that. So it's really important that everyone feels like they belong in school. If they feel safe, they, mm. they are going to feel like they belong. We are going to empower um, their self-esteem. Mm. We are going to boost... Um, 
or we are going to help to build their own identity as well. They are going to try to decide, oh, okay, I, I am more on this approach or I am more on this approach. Um, we are going to also try to um, create um, internal locus of control mm -hmm. because they are going to feel more confident that they can deal with situations instead of the situations are going to, to, to be the ones that have the control or maybe other person. So it's really important to build that. And when you have all of these things, you feel more in control of the situation. And that if, and if you see, everything is connected. Mm. So if you feel resilient, if you build resilience, if you are more empathetic, if you cultivate compassion, and you are going to, because they are students, you are building your identity. You feel it in a place that you feel safe. You're in a place that you feel safe, that you feel that you belong. Everything is going to flow. Yes. And everything is connected. And if everyone do the same thing, we are all giving the same message. Mm. So that that's our priority and that's what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Safe, happy, thriving, successful young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And that's a good approach. I think it's the best approach. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Thank you, Natalia. I love speaking to you. I can speak I to you all day. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, me too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.